You have a prepaid call from an inmate at the California Institution for Women, Corona, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using... Hi, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Okay. Yes, I would love... Um, I'd be going to board soon. Um, as of right now, they have my juvenile board starting at um, September 10th of 2022. And um, I would love some support letters from different organizations. And if possible, maybe some legal advice before I go. I'm having a little bit of a hard time right now on my... I'm putting my board packet together, so anything would help. Okay, so what do you go by? What did I go by? Yes. My um, my father gave me the nickname of Shady, so I went by Shady my whole life. What's your nationality? I'm Caucasian. You ever, were you ever part of any gangs, groups, organizations, or an associate? Yes. Can you elaborate exactly of, of which gang or neighborhood it is? Well, um, the men that I hung around, they were my and um, I was very much an associate of them. As a matter of fact, last night I went to a gang awareness group and I didn't realize how much of the activity I actually participated in. And so this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And so I was listening to the steps of the gang. Um, it's like kind of like a 12 step for the gang members though, or the gang activities and stuff, and I didn't even realize how much I was actually more involved than I thought I was. Okay, um, where are you from out here in the streets? I'm from Modesto. Okay, um, can you elaborate a little bit um, on how you got uh, involved in the gang lifestyle? Well, whenever I was younger, um, I, did, I ran away from home a lot. My father, he was a very nice man. He beat me and my mother all the time. And, and um, I ran away a lot. And, never, and my mother had some mental disease called agoraphobia, called disorder. And um, she really didn't put down too much discipline due to her not being able to like leave the house. So I took advantage of it and I ran away a lot. And um, I met a guy and he, in, well, I went to juvenile hall whenever I was first to live in. And, um, I met this guy, and he dated, and um, he welcomed me, and he never, I never got jumped in, I never got, um, but I was like the right hand man, because I was a girl, and, you know, girls wasn't supposed to be in games, and um, it was a Mexican, more Mexican nationality than it was Spanish nationality than it was white, so like I really didn't fit in, so I was the least expected to do anything, you know, like with authority, I was the least expected, I was a little blonde haired, green eyed girl, and um, nobody really expected me, so they had me do a lot of dirty work. As I progressed to get older, I started to meet older guys that um, were more involved. I was about eight years old, and um, as I started working there, I just went downhill. I started robbing stores, I started doing I didn't do it to finish with the gang. I did it, you know, to the people that I was around. And um, it led to being locked up multiple times in jail, in county jail, my first time to prison. What are you incarcerated for and how long is your sentence? Right now, um, I was arrested in 2003 for a reign of terror. It uh, was involved with four men that were um, Martino and we drove, they asked me to be the driver of a home invasion and I agreed, I got in the car, I drove them to the house and 
the men proceeded to get out. They went in the house. They were gone for about 45 minutes. They got in. I drove. And I looked in the movie mirror, and I noticed that we were being pulled over. So I uh, took the cops on a high-speed chase. And it was a nine-minute high-speed chase through Turlock, Cell High, and there. And um, whenever I decided to come to a complete stop, one of my co defendants jumped on and shot at the police. So today, um, I'm sitting here for two seven or life sentences plus 11 years. And how long have you been incarcerated? 18 years. Where are you currently incarcerated at? I'm in CIW. When you first got sentenced, how did you feel about it? And when you first went to prison and hit the main line, what was your mentality? Whenever I first got there, because of my child, because of my adolescent um, duties, that I thought that I had... Um, Coming to me, I thought that I was going to automatically have the respect because of the things that I've done. Um, I walked around and my head was up high, but I didn't fit because, you know, even though I didn't gain, um, like, literally, like, for my hood, um, I am from West Side Modesto, and that is what I did, or what I hung around. And um, whenever I got there, the Southerners didn't like it too much, so I felt like I was dropped in little L.A., and um, I had a really hard time at first because my hair was real long, blonde, my eyes are light, um, I'm a little shapely, but I didn't fit in with the, with the Spanish girls because they were all from either San Diego or they were from L.A., and then I didn't fit along um, with the white girls because I'm not a featherweight, I wasn't in the wood pile. I didn't sit along. I, I was just me, you know, and, and I kind of just wanted to do my time, you know, the old saying, you know, don't hang around with the, the bitches or the snitches or, you know, and I kind of had that mentality whenever I first landed and I felt, well, you know, I'm here for shooting at the police, so I'm going to have a little respect. Well, about a week, week, week into my time in, in the penitentiary on the main line, um, I kind of found out different. I got into a fight, 13 fights in about probably about two weeks and um, it wasn't it wasn't easy whenever I first hit I did I did six months <laughs> on the um receiving yard um because all I did was fight and I couldn't get off the yard and go to the main line. Okay, can you elaborate real briefly? Um because I read your case, and I read the DA's narrative. In your own words, yeah. what is your narrative, and do you believe you got a fair trial and a fair sentence? Okay, whenever, um, whenever I first got arrested, uh, well, okay, let's go back a little bit. In 2002, I met my wife. I had been with her five years. And I lived in Manteca. I had known the one, my one code of dinner previously. I've known him since I was 18. I wasn't really um, too familiar with the other guys that were there, but I had known this one in particular for a while. Okay. But I, he went to prison. I went off. I got married to um, my wife, and then I uh, moved to Manteca. I became a self-contracted and sold through two different companies. She was a um, manager of YS Restaurant, kitchen manager, and um, I was about 24. And I had called my mom and I said, Mom, I said, can you call my pro officer to see, I mean, my probation officer to see if I'm still on probation. So she called and they said I've been discharged. I think that was probably the most exciting time in my whole life for, you know, from county jail and juvenile hall. I had had a tag on me since I was 11 years old. So um, I felt like that life was over, you know, and I was like, hey, I could put that in the bag. I'm going to move on. I'm going to do this. Well, um, just so happened, I left my wife in 2002 in December, and I went back to the only thing that I knew, which was the street. The um, staff life, the older homeboys, you know, I went back to what was still good. Um, but around January of 2003, um, we met up, and he, he wasn't really saying too much about what they were doing. And then um, in May, I had met up with a... I had a mishap with this guy. Um, he was um, not, he didn't 
wasn't too liked with the people that I was hanging around with, just put it that way. And then, um, so, it kind of hid out a little bit from the one I called my brother, and, and that was for bigger home weight. And um, I uh, kind of disappeared for about three months. And in August, I kind of realized what they were doing. And then, when I got arrested, I had realized that they were doing a uh, home station. And the DA called us the rain and air. And um, they had did 12 previous accommodations before I got involved. I was involved in this uh, accommodation for the night. It was tense that rolls over because it started in, on the night around 10 and it ended at like 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning on the 10th. Um, they had did, um, we had over 106 victims in the case. Um, they did some very horrible things to to people. I was involved in the very last one, and my phone call, our phone calls, we were being surveilled for the last 28 days. Our phone call this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Our phone calls were being recorded, so they recorded me saying, um, is it going to be something like the last time where I dropped you off and picked you up a couple hours later? Um, and they tied me into being the driver for the whole 12, previous 12 home invasions, which I never did. I drove for the very last one. Um, thank God, none of the, um, nobody got really hurt. The cops, they didn't get um, shot. They, um, we got it over at it's called the Ranger Fire and the Kill Zone. Doesn't make it any better. Um, but that's, but that's the charge that, or the overt act that they gave us to slap it on to us even more. But um, I do think, I don't think I got a fair trial because they tried me with the guys. I think that we should have been bifurcated. The boys ended up with 11 life sentences and 521 years. They never gave them the opportunity. Well, they did give them the opportunity to get on stand to testify for me, saying that I wasn't involved with the last 12 home invasions, but because they wouldn't incriminate themselves and say what they were going to say, they didn't, they didn't allow them to. Um, as far as time, do I think that I got the time that I deserved? I think God gave me what he thought should sit me down and give me some time to think of the life that I was living. Okay, what do you have to say to the, the youth, the youngsters out here that's involved in gang activity or thinking about joining gangs? I know that there's a lot of kids, I know because I did it too as well, but I know that we get into groups, whether if it's a, a one man group, whether if it's... You have 60 seconds remaining. Whether if it's Southerners, Northerners, or, or just some old made-up thing that you made, it's not worth it. Um, you're going to end up either dead or where I'm sitting right now doing a life sentence. And um, there's a lot of help out there, and if you need some, just reach out. You know, you can write me. Um, I could be your pen pal, you could write, I have other girls in here that's part of willing to sit down and talk with you. Um, there's organizations out there, you could go to Homeboy Industries, there's all kinds of different places out there. But I would hate to see you sitting where I am just for that wrong, wrong decision. It only takes a second. Okay, before he cuts off, do you want to give a shout out to any family or friends or the, or the, the audience who can? Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for taking this time right out, and thank you, Todd, for doing this and reaching out to the youth. Um, mom and my dad, I love you, and everybody that I haven't seen for 18 years, hi. Um, 